Hello, how's it going out there tonight? I hope you guys are doing okay, or wherever you where you are, wherever you may be. I want to do a follow up on the video about in fact, and a lot of, I've seen some comments go about when they were down there in Kentucky. Why it seemed like you know this last time they wasn't down there, and it was misinformation that they didn't do anything in which the founder himself came online and he said this to, he said this himself that the purpose was he was down there was basically to get results when he showed up down there he he made it a point to be down there on the time doing it, the derby what happened was with all the protesting with with the other militia groups down there and the, the Black Lives protesters, and I mean Black Lives Matter protesters, and other protest people were protesting on the other side of downtown Louisville, Kentucky. You know they had to bring out the sh they had to bring out all every law enforcement, every state trooper. They had to bring out and they had to come down and get the National Guards because they were armed. Believe me that there were armed individuals out there, and it was the so-called three percenters was out there and you had in fact coming on the other side and they believed that keeping the protesters and these militia group groups particularly this militia group black separate because it's something if they would have let it all both militia groups could have got it could have been something not so good plus you take in the black lives matter the fact so what they did was black lives i mean so they had so in fact the, the and, and the black militia group was behind the gate and and it was guards it was police and everything what happened what it was that technically it was that much traffic going through and it was not that much traffic going through the, uh, what he was saying downtown because he said slow down business now you can only imagine in the midst of a COVID people are already scared to get catching the COVID for one but when all that protesting was going down in Louisville Kentucky on all sides it did make it then it's some money so Grandmaster J made an influence in that arena and it may not be an arena where people think it come down to guns blazing and burn the city and, and, and take it out on our fight and, and people are getting up they said well why did they, they didn't do anything what what it, it, doing it? if they would have acted out crazy they would have been labeled as a as a group as a terrorist group if they would have just went down and, 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 and you got the protesters fight you got the one militia shooting at the other militia it would have been it would have been really bad if it would have got like that then you have to have the police have to come in in the National Guard, and it had been it had been a gun to shoot out. So those were the people who were saying, "Well, they didn't do anything." It would spark all that. And, and so the man was bright enough to, to was well, bright enough and smart enough to, to do that. Number two, two thing, it because I heard a couple YouTubers said this on this channel that they believe it, that the guns were fake. I don't think that they would come all the way down down to Louisville, Kentucky to bring some fake weapons that down there. What you got thirty five hundred people coming down there with fake weapons. For what? And only the people that were present around them know that those weapons were real. And I believe that those wep rep those weapons are real. Because obviously the, and it was a certain incident what happened before someone got shot. And it was because the guy had an older gun and he explained this on his channel and I don't and so whatever he, they make they make it a political point and he just like he said it's a show of pop it's basically show a power with arms because some people seem to get it get a better message when you are armed because they don't take you seriously when you, when you come down there and with with protests and you yelling screaming, but if but if a few people give 
act out of act out of character when you see what happened in most city cities. Well, when when the black militia showed up, no one acted out of character. They kept it in line. Everything was ordered. I mean, they kept their people in order. I witnessed this on three or four news channels down on people's channel. It was a couple of white YouTubers that were filming it and they couldn't figure out what was going on with this black militia. They just, they're not doing anything. They're just sitting there. They're not, they're not doing anything. This is what they said on, on on their YouTube. So I'm basically, I'm watching this. That They didn't do anything. So, and they, it was two or three different cameras. If you go back and watch certain, um, I forgot it was a couple um, live stream. They live stream it during that time that happened. But it slowed down the traffic that came in for that derby. It slowed, I mean, it practically bring it to a halt and it lost millions of dollars. Not only just because of the COVID, because they didn't want to deal with all that that mess down there. Then you got you got you got these two, three, three it scared people. So you got two or three different militias down there, and you got black you got some black lives panel and possibly could be Antifa down there, and they're doing their thing and people are angry and rupture angry. That's why they boarded all all that stuff up. So just but with, when the black militia showed everything was cool. His people were, were calm. And they did just like with the white militia, militia did. And they would just have them on the other side just in case some conflict would have jumped off. And somebody would have probably, you know, instigated something that got these two groups to go, going on. See, this guy, who, he that's why I say you, you underestimate who he really is. He's smart enough to know this. The guy, he know how instig instigation go on and somebody would try to spread some rumor and knock some down, and next thing you know, you have people going, going at it with guns. And then this, they would have, and then this would have been on all over social media, and would have been all over media. Then it would have been looked like the black militia was the the tar was basically targeting white people and other people. And then it would have been like even somebody would have been shot, somebody could have been possibly killed. So that's why Grandmaster J he used force without. And he does it legally by the law. And the, and the police understood this. They, the state troopers, the police, the, 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 the county government officials understood what they were doing. And they know that and they make sure that the police and the law enforcement make sure that nothing jumped off. That's why they were down, down there. This is... Um, so I heard a couple people mention that. So just in case, because they say every time when they show up, they, man, they, they, what, what did they do? They well, technically they, they did, and he did record himself talking to the individuals, who were, he, he would, what was the program, what was the setup? He let so much information on his personal channel, did this, and, and whoever was paying attention, you go back and see the video. He was talking to some individuals on online. He always showed who he interviews with. There have been people with cameras in his face. So he's not really being a fake about it. He there were people that were interviewing and you could tell by the accent from different parts of the world. He he did have people and I've seen numerous video people wanting to know about this black militia. And and I don't know what he's supposed to do. Act, and people who are complaining about this are saying this guy's a fake. He's a phony and blah, blah, blah. This I said, well, he, well you, you can say that, but it, it, did anybody get killed? Did anybody get? Well, what did he do for the Brown case? First of all, by he, he used his influence because he he was in politics at one time. So he was able when they understood who he was he he had to use a couple channels to get up to the, the attorney general and his, his other elected officials that's why he used his political way then that and when they found out they know who he was because they looked back at the video and they probably called some constituencies who is this guy 
Because believe me, they they, they want to know who who it, they did some background check on Grandmaster Jack, but he was able to come in and say what's go, going on and whatever they said behind political scene. So he was honest enough to come forth and say, "This is our conversation. What happened?" And just like he did with the situation with the senator, the guy who was a representative, the senator or representative down there. And he always records if people would ever pay attention to his channel. There's a two or three channels that he allowed people to see what is he, he's talking about. The man is not going to go on there grasping in anything. He's not going to go down down and sit down to Louisiana, you know, like a bunch of hellhounds and burning the town down to jumping on innocent people. I don't know what what more can you can you prove of it. It's a political thing. It, he's using the force with political. That's the, that's it. And, and he pretty much tells this in his video. Basically, I said, oh, okay. Because it sounds like it, he's going to do it. But it, it's for, and he goes to a different arena as far as coming behind what he's going to do. So he get the full unload, whatever it is. And then he used the law that he knows and reports that he knows to come back and tell the people what's really going on and tell the whole public this is what's going on with this case behind walls. This is what we find out. He's very forthcoming with it. So he's not really benefit off of anything. Number one, let's say as far as he, he mentioned, he even was forthcoming about even the shirts that he was wearing. He said that he, he, there was a company because some people, you know, someone suggested, hey, maybe since you, because people want, they, they like, and so he's, you know, he may, you know, basically say he approved his level. Listen to the man. And he had his own t-shirt made up. People online get their own t-shirt made. I've seen a couple of YouTubers get their own t-shirt made. What is the, what is the problem with that? But it's like, okay, but what you expect him to do? He said, let me go through the proper channels. But if something would go down, he, I think he would have let the police handle it. And if it gets overwhelming, then, the, then they probably would go and engage because they have proper engagement with whoever it is. But they're not just going to go down and, and start something. And that's basically what he, he's saying. If you got some issue, we can't use you. In that, that sense, I mean, all you have to do is sit down and people listen. It's like, well, what is, what, what is he doing? Is, is this some kind of, because they can get some kind of conspiracy. No, it's strategy. You have a certain strategy that you have to use. I mean, because sometimes they can just blow the average person off. He know how to get in there and and but what I call put on a different coat to get the get the job done politically just to talk with people. Where some people don't have that that gift to do that. So that's his gift to gap. I mean he, he's good at you know, you know how to articulate himself. Not only that he articulates himself pretty good, he's able to tell the law and they have to and their friends or his constituents know that he's right with the law. He know how to confine with the law. Just like that center down in Louisiana. He knows he know he can go within a boundary. If not, if they deny him the right to basically, you know, demonstrate their, their, their freedom of speech, that could be a lawsuit. Because you, if you're going to do this to the, the other militias who are white, you can't, do, you can't, they, if you violate, they they can sue sue you for violation. And, and these militia groups, they know the law. But they they would I think was mad because some white militia figured that a black militia know the same type of law. Because before they was able to go out and carry those those weapons and things like that, they had to get clearance in the law what to do, what not to do. Because whatever they can do, there's a certain book that that when you have a weapon. 
uh, certain things can happen where you can stay law for and you won't get arrested. So that's something to really think. And these militia groups know this. That's why I said, and he said the man did his research. Search. That's what I'm trying to. I'm trying to tell you. He's that's the, he's no dummy. And the reason why some people that's picking at him because he know that oh well he he's he's this guy's not too serious. When they hear when they when he basically he addressed them. Oh, you gonna. You saying I know the law such and such? He was quoting the law because some white guy was calling him out online, saying, "Well, he don't know how to properly exchange the gun and certain things." And he showed, in having a military background, he showed the guy shut it, basically shut him down, and he showed, showed him by by the constitution of the law, even with with these representatives. And they had, and they probably had to call their lawyers and said, "Is this is this guy is right?" He always called. He called that. He called um, his, his these constituents. Said, "Yeah, this guy. Yeah, yeah, Cordy, whatever it represents. Is this black militia? This this guy, Grandma? Is he right about this?" They had called, and he's and when they looked in their law books, yes, he's right. You have to let him come in. Yeah, you have to let him demonstrate because it went by the books, and the law enforcement officials. And the other officials knew this. So, people, before you make a claim, first of all, he's a, he's a thinker. You have some people who have to really think about what they're doing because that's something that's really dang, dangerous. So, even though it sounds like it's coming like it's coming like a force, sometimes it's kind of like they what they've done. To blacks for four, two or three hundred years, but they actually would. Some people actually do it, and they get you all fear up because they they they, they paint the vision. And this is what they did. They paint the vision, and so that's why a lot of black people would get scared and, and things like that. So long as they kept you in fear, they think of that of death that these sick individuals. That's what they would push the fear. Well, he decided to reverse what, what they're doing and put the fear back on them. And any individuals, even though that he's, he's, he's letting those individuals know, I'm putting the fear back on you because it's, it's a fear game. And that's what the, the weapon thing's all about. And so when this happened, this was a fact. There were, there were people getting mysteriously lynched. And it was not, it was African Americans was only when this past pandemic came out, the white people were getting, were arming up just like that. African Americans were slowly grabbing. When this lynching went down, and when he said what he said, you start seeing these videos pop up about black gun clubs and everything. People start getting armed because they saw the immediate danger that there's some individuals out there snatching individuals off the road who are African American and putting them to death, and they duck, and it's gonna start being a chain chain reaction. So it, it was something like like some kind of around the country. So that kind of motivates. Oh well, who see, you have some sick people out here that would do something like that. But when this like this man rose up and and, and when they showed the masses of people it was like they could be anywhere in your city so basically when he showed up it basically it took, let those people know we arrived and the, and then because there's other groups he is, is lining up uh, lining up this is what they don't they don't realize this this other black militia groups are like is taking note of this but they let them have have the state, but they go to a different political elite arena because he he had that he has to give to get up there, and before he allowed these things to happen, there's no conspiracy going on anything like that. He ha but you have to do it basically like any other people. When you go with another nation before they go to war, this this they had to sit down and they make sure the last negotiations. 
So they would send a representative to let them know this is what's going to happen and this and this. And if this, and that country don't agree, sooner or later, you know how the UN goes. Then if one country go in violation, then they have to let those countries go to war. So basically, it's the same strategy if you sit down and, and think about this. So you can't go down there half cocked. He already said that, told the people back then, on the first time, he, he got information and let them know you're not going to like this. He it's on the whole public to let them know what was going on. What was going on. He was there to get information because they wasn't properly getting information. The public didn't know down there in Louisville, Kentucky. They wasn't telling it. And now... He's if by hit that black militia showed up with these militia and black and think you know BLM them and these other groups it, it 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 shook the foundation it shook the foundation to now okay this other law enforcement had, now every now that things are a snowball they're rolling out the FBI and everybody else it was to expose all that this this the corruption that's what it was, is about. That's what he used the strategy for, because this young lady was like that. Because this is something bigger than what and with what this young lady in in the, was was going on behind the doors in Louisville, Kentucky. That's that's why he, he showed he showed up. He showed up, and people were just saying that this guy's a fraud. This guy's a phony. No, he just used a simple strategy. He's a thinking man. If you ever sit down and listen, he thinks about, he's coordinating what he's, he's going to do. And he basically, because what, what does he got to lose? What's come out of his po pocket? He's, everything's coming out of his pocket, basically. But he's teaching you, but he found another way to be lawful because there was no... There, it was not a, a militia to the point that was able to take it to the next, that they was able to get an individual who's able to go to that level because instead of a bunch of guys just, you know, not, you know, disrespecting the other militias, but there haven't been a guy to, to go in there and, and understand the language, the legal and the legality of the language of what the laws of these cities and states do. That's where Grandmaster Jake came came in at. That's what he's doing. If you really sit down and listen to why when he said he just jump into conclusions. But he said we gotta go this way. But if we if this a sense of a rule of engagement, he would have to let the police do what they gotta do. Cause he even said that hey, hey, get get that person before we get him. And he let the police do what they do. But the police <laughs> If get overwhelmed, then then then, it, then that's when they engage behind. Because if someone's coming at them, you know, they're going to be shooting at the police and them. But the police is going to have to deal with it first. It's all that's just pretty much strategy. That way, it, and he's already noticed because did, did the state, did the city and state, what 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 the incident would happen? Yes, he he let them engage, but it was since it was a threat, and we had to protect. Um, they had. That's what the poli police. That's what, they let the police do what they do, and the government and the state patrol do what they do, and the county do what they do. And this is what you guys, most most people don't understand that. Is it's a process you have to go through. You just can't go in there, even though. But 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 this thing is snowballing. Now, Brianna's case is getting is every more things are coming out. It, it, it was the shaking of the foundation. It was already a shakening, but you need something, you know, Black Lives Matter did their big thing, but in fact had to go to a different level and, sh and shake, shake their thing to the point that the mayor had to answer and every, the judge, it revealed the judges, the mayor, the prosecutor, damn on camera. Now you've seen what's going on down there and it still have been resolved. And it, I mean, they ain't in some world a mess, but he started. He went to a level and snowball, snowball the effect. He caused a snowball because even though that these people were protesting, 
it got violent. And they said, whoa. And, you know, like any other city throughout America, it was violent. It got in with pollutings, the burning, the business, and things like that. But something, but it would have kind of been hushed up on, under. In fact, had an individual that know how to get to that level. And then it be shut down that everything that he, and he said, pretty much like a, this is what's going to happen. And he even said it. And sure enough, it started happening. He proved it. And right now, what you see down there, he, he got to a certain level. That's what he, he did. And I mean, this was something that even the government had, had to come in. He got the, of the main United States government. <laughs> That's what he, he did. But he played it by the rules. That's what, what Grandmaster Jay did. He played it by rules. That's pretty slick what he did. But people are like, well, how come he didn't do this? He, he didn't do a darn thing. And that, yes, he did. Yes, he did. It shook up the foundation. You know, the the ride team was already do, doing this part, right? Before, because he saw what happened up in Minneapolis. But he said, well, let me get Louisville, Kentucky. And then all of a sudden, then the organization Black Lives Matter, then he told Black stand down. And they they had to stand they had that black militia had had black there was some black lives protesters down there. They stood down and everything was calm. That black militia when they was that there that day and no one attacked them. There was no he said what he said a lot of colorful words. I mean, it did sound like it was kinda of like you gonna burn and that's what got the the white militia, oh God, they gonna come back with and burn down the city. You know, it's like no. You know, he, he used the Jedi mind trick. Now you got you got these people thinking that this black militia gonna come down there and just gonna roll up and shoot the police. Go they had to fight the, the the police. They would have to fight the state troopers. They would have to fight the doggone national guard because they you know what I'm saying. Then and then they would have been thrown if that was the case. But these 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 other silly militias and other people. Who's following? Believe them. Believe that. Why did he say saying he all explained? He and, and the man who was trying to rebuke Grandmaster Jay, he just made a fool of himself, he trying to make himself relevant. But it, it was I said that was not. Well, we we protected the police. They they already got the National Guard. They don't need need, need you down there. But if you allowed it, if you if it was some other case, then. Where, then you have the right to, to do, demonstrate like the black militia did. But no, you, the, 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 the National Guard, the state police, and the city in Louisville, Kentucky, they had it all covered out. But, you know, it was like, yeah, then he, they were firing back at, each, back at, at each other. But, yeah, but, he, but with, the, with the, I guess with the angry Viking guy, he wasn't able to get to that level. What Grandmaster Jay was able because Grandmaster Jay ran for president, so he know how to get to the channels and get up in in that in those those places where usually someone would, sh would shut the door. It was it was someone probably be up from BLM unless there was a hierarchy person in BLM, they would shut the door on him. That's why he that's why he did it, people. That's why he did it. That's why he was going that the man is thinking at his strategy strategy. He's not bringing no violence. I mean, it's, it's not the, the course to go down there and have individuals get shot and hurt, whether they're white or they're black. That was not his mission. His mission was to get to the top of this, 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 this systemic system of racism, expose it. That's what, in fact, was was going to, was supposed to do. I made a couple of videos about 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 this topic but now this goes into more detail listen to to the man listen to what he's saying you know, you know it may not be what you the way it should be but even those other militias will, will understand if they would jump out of pocket they would be labeled as a terrorist group they would be labeled like an antifa they think I said they, the, all the black militia, black Huey Q Newton Club, the black pan, the new black. They know this. They they have to think this 
their leaders have to think of, about this. And they only know when to dis they know when to basically flex their muscles on certain occasions. Because it it has to show that part. That's what in that's what in fact doing. Because you have people running around thinking that they can keep murdering innocent black people. That's what the whole thing was about with the Panthers. Because they were people were doing it. They were they were trying to go across this country in every different city, and so and so. Hell, it's almost like they wanted to be on the news, like a serial serial killer. Basically, you know, it's like oh, you got one serial killer. I think I can kill thirty more people, and so it's like hey, hey, someone had to come up and step and step down with this. That's why I said said it was the reverse, the mentality of the people who's infiltrating terroristic acts. That's what it was all about. It was not about going down there, but it said, let the people know, no, I'm going to inform them. So if this happened, we, if, if, if we going down, one of these people would do the terrorist thing going down. Because if you bring terrorists, then the terrorists are going to come back to you. And it, it don't have to mean, it's not, not just people in the Middle East, but that could, should go in the same thing in America. You do terroristic acts, you you pay you gonna pay the price and, and think that you're gonna go back and hide. No, you're not. So that's basically what the message was basically was saying with this black vote. No, you're not gonna do terroristic acts to our people. You're not gonna keep doing these things. You're not gonna keep setting the chain of events. Cause we gonna we're gonna form it and they're gonna fight back. And so the tip is, and it's like that's why I use the the rabbit, the hunter, and the rabbit. Now nobody don't like it when the when the the, the rabbit got the gun, and that's just an analogy of it. Not that I'm saying black people are rabbits. I'm just saying the analogy of it. But that's what basically it was about. It was it wasn't about that. So no, he's a thinking man. People need to listen and learn from people. And just don't just hear one or two videos. Listen to him. Listen what he's saying. And it makes it, 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 he knows what he's doing. I mean, the man's been in, been in the government. I mean, for a service. Then I said, however, he's able to get to the to, to level to run for president. So when, so when he got to that level, he did a a lot of research and study and everything else to, and and back up the how to basically run and he was forthcoming with that on, on his, how he ran for president who was his campaign manager and it, it was there's video and he lied because he knew people were going to say okay this guy must be an agent he knew he knew that people were going to do that he had all this all this training <laughs> people just fell right into it and, if he, and like he said, he wasn't Asian. I said, it, it would have been worse. He would have been people getting all locked up and everything. And he would expose have half the people in, in <laughs> if that was the case. So if he was an Asian, that's what would have happened. Somebody would have found out. But no, it's just that he has a certain coordination with what he does. And that's pretty, that's pretty smart. But he knows to go down the boundary law. It's like what the problem with the other one. There might be some people that want to join, let's say a white person want to join a white militia. And you got these crazy extreme streamers. That's what like, they'll end up like someone like a Timmy McVeigh. But maybe the, the, the white militia may say, well, wait, wait a minute. We don't, we're not want to be looked at that way. But you, you don't, you seem to tell me you have a couple of knuckleheads that say, yeah, I want to blow some stuff up. And, you, and, and, and if whatever, the three percenters or one other white militia, they know they would have someone like that in their group. But they know that they're crazy. And they would come right back to them. They would come back and they'd be labeled like the KKK. And, and, and my line. So, you know, if some, somebody come join that group, some white guy join that group, talk about making explosives, making bombs, and end up doing something with that happened up in Oklahoma about in 1995, because some guy who was prior military and he just want to go nuts or you can have someone like an Eric Rudolph that go actually and go up and go down and 
what happened with the Atlantic bombing back in 1996 and blow up an abortion in, in, because in, in trying to get out of the abortion clinic and set up a bomb and people got injured in Maine. Because well, what, 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 what those two cases got in common? Extreme groups. I have never heard a black militia making no bombs, nor ever in the history since the Black Panthers have ever think about, okay, this government is pissing us so well, let's make a bomb go and, and go blow up some office. But someone get an idea from some of these good old boys that run back out there in the woods to make pipe bombs and things like that. And they do. They go out and they do that. Put, put pipe bombs under people's car. When do you know a black militia would do something like that? Put pipe bombs in people's buildings? Sit arsenic through the mail? Who, do, who who's the real terrorist? Nation of Islam don't do nothing like that. QB New Club don't do nothing like that. Um, the Black Panthers don't do nothing like that, or any other um, group, radical, what they call radical black supremacist group. When have a black supremacist group did something like that? Not one time. Not one. Not, not intact a whole, I mean, to the point that other people got maimed and injured. In this country, on this foreign, on this foreign land, you tell me that, and I don't think, in fact, what, what is it? Some people probably have a capability if they've been in the military, but I don't think they would do that. They're not going to do something like that. That's not in their nature to do that. And they just got the same amount of weapon training as, as that those white militias do. They, they just snipers in their team probably martial artists and everything else and all different part. I'm pretty sure that they are. I mean, you see, see some of the people in, the, in that black militia, they pretty built. <laughs> they pretty good, damn good shape. <laughs> These commanders is anyway, God, dog. Even the women, I'm like, Jesus. Uh, like they, yeah. So, so, but, and if something would happen, it, it, that's why I said the man is is more smart than what you think, and he, he would have no crazy crackpot in there. That's why he let people know we got to we got to fill you out, because you ain't gonna go down there being a hothead and I mean look at these white people. I mean you know I'm gonna shoot them. Well, you can't and, you know, calm, calm calm your anger down. He know let him do what he do. He's angry, but he know how to channel his anger. Some people don't, a, a lot of people don't know how to channel, let's go across the board. A lot of people don't know how to channel the anger. So that's why it's let him do it, but he does it constructively with his anger. And it sounds forced when it's forward and direct and military, because some people got to be direct and straight to the point with a lot, with a few cuss words in between, but it, 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 gets, it gets the job done. But I made this video because there were people were saying that well, what what did they do? And it, and say just think about it. If you go down and acting irrational, he was right. They will you let's do it do it your way. You form a militia, you do it your way, and see what would happen. And if you don't have someone to go in and proper and negotiate, and you got someone to get mad because they, I mean, get get hot head. And bullets go flying out, AR-15s a gun. It don't stop. It's going, it's going to hit a few things until it, it finally, maybe a, a thirty-inch tree would stop it or a building. So you can't, you know, you can't give an individual <laughs> some of the guns, the artillery, and all these militia groups know this. They on the, from the black militia to the white militia groups. That's why, that's why. You, you know, the show of force, that's basically what it is. And get this person thinking. And I made the other video about does he, does he understand what, he, what is he doing when he came with this, this representative down in Louisiana. And he had to sit down and think about it. And it's not so much the violent part of it, but what does that look like? If you have black people, and this man came down there not to provoke violence, 
but the exercise because it was an injustice done to some black men and black women in Louisiana. And your, and your office didn't bother to take initiative because you side with the person that who did the injustice to this black person that maybe wasn't a criminal or whatever. This is why, this is, these are why the people wanted to come down there. But it was one, they wanted to come down to address that. And, and right during election season, like I got mentioned in the one video, would that be wise? Were you trying to get the black vote in Louisiana, Clay Higgins? Would that be wise that you go after this black man? in his group and doing election time starting up some things stirring up the pot you gotta really you gotta really think about what you're doing and you could make it very hard for your constituent because your constituents want to hold their office that's what it, it, it comes down to and they hey they'll turn they'll cut the rug away from you and seem good old buddies with that was at the clubhouse, but when it comes to them right now with this economy, things going on the ground, and they want to hold on that position, they want to hold on that part, they'll cut and turn on you in a minute. And say, hey, we're not with them. You see what's happening now. Sometimes some things ain't always got to result in violence. But you got to be, some things happen with simple rationality. That's what it comes down to. They come down to exercise it right because some people have always felt fear and scared. He wants to uplift them and say, it's all right. What's wrong with that? Just like some someone who the president campaigned across the country represented, I hear you, I see you, I want to show you everything going to be all right. And, and some people need to uplift him because unlike the other people, people of poverty down there, black people in Pride, Louisiana have never really felt free, free to really feel empowered and feel emboldened like they have ever been had before. Because they've seen they've been tyranny uh, in, in little laws and just laws in Louisiana. And they just put them in fear. Well, in fact, it's breaking that fear on a, on a different level. It's, and it, it's the changing of the guard. And sometimes it takes a man to change of, of the guard. Then, if man don't listen, then divine nature listen. And you see what happened in Louisiana with the hurricanes and everything. Divine event because there's so much detrimental injustices in the land. That's why we that's why something and the most high he's getting tired of all this injustice this 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 double handed under justice well if you you're not a, you're a citizen but you of a different shade of color but if this person does the same thing that this person does this a little slap on the hand and, and go about their business unless it's something really detrimental if it caused I mean, it's almost like probably some place like Louisiana, you have to, a white man can less 10 to 15 kids in order to get a longer time. Black man can less one kid, I'm just using that as an example. He'll, and they'll give him more 20 to life. The white man, he can, can less 13 kids or whatever. Could be white kids, black kids, whatever. He'll get, I'll get he'll do three, be out, be out in eight. Why the black man got to do 10 to 15 for the same? This is just one example. But even though they're both egregious, egregious crime, they, they both, these both men did the wrong thing. They both did a heinous thing. Same way it could be with, with murder. You know, the most high is getting tired of this, this, this kind of injustice. And in and it, that's purposely done to people of color. Whether they, whatever the offense could be, it could be some simple as a traffic ticket. This is what's going on. This is what sparked all the, 
all this, st this stuff. Again, this sparked all these things. And you think, and, and you're doing this, and, look, and you're trying to kind of coddle black people and African Americans. But there's a segment of African Americans is seeing the same injustice for decade after decade after decade, and they're tired. They're tired of not getting their voice heard. That's why they in this even some in different professions are getting tired because you want to choose to to put them in the backyard. Black people are getting tired of being put in the back back of the bus. They get tired of being put in the back of the woods. They get tired of being put but back and just told just deal with it and, and come back another fifty days or fifty two years. They're getting tired of it. Clay Aikens. And to anyone who think like Clay Aikens, they're tired. They're tired. That's why, in fact, it's going coming down there to end, to come with solidarity, to let them know the changing of the guard starts, the changing of the waves, and probably the, where he go, he go, it's starting. It's time time for this injustice to stop. Play, playing from one race to the other, one race when, when like I mentioned, when two people committed a cyber crime. That needs to stop. And whether it's at a local level or whether it's at a high level, it needs to stop. And if it don't, the most high is going to expose it. And you can't arrest and you can't assassinate the most high. When you because you're gonna be exposed. And you can't be blessed doing wicked in the dark. That's why. And even though it has to take a man like Grandmaster Jay. To kind of let things be, it, it, it's the reason why some things have to be exposed. Because some people don't, they just think they're above the law. Them days are over. Them good, the days of what they used to do back in centuries ago, they just do, do corrupt to keep, get away with it. No. They can get, you know, corrupt with murder and everything. No. There's a day of reckoning. And this, as you deny, it's going to get worse. As you, you try to, that hide, you can't hide under the rock, you can't hide, hide under, behind nobody. You have to deal with the punishment of the, whatever certain consequences. And so, so to get back to it, that's what basically what it's about. It's not about everything's about going to pick up a gun. Sometimes you have to think before you, before that be the second or third or last results. But it's, but that what before that or have to happen, that have, it has to come from the other side acting irrational. This is what happened, and when I mentioned about the men earlier, they got so caught up in their hatred, like a Timmy McVeigh and Eric Rudolph, they didn't care nothing about about that, and many people like that who who did terrorist at that, and I'm sorry to say that this is white guys, a bunch of white guy, certain type of white guy. Gets jealous because he don't get his voice heard, and he feel like the whole doggone country is changing because some sexuality or some religious persuasion trying to make away from equality, and he feel like he's taking less, so he got to act out his own own ignorant way to take it out on other, other innocent people, and no one had nothing to do with it, and even mean it means other white people. That's really freaking bad. And that's what Timmy, a, a person like a Timmy McVeigh did. Being part of this, and he served his country like a good old boy fashion American. But look what happened. Who's the, who's the real terrorist? And he didn't give a damn about anything. But you got individuals like that running around the United States, setting car bombs and stuff. And you'd be surprised what they look like. And they harm individuals. They harm people that's in high judges, the attorneys, the prosecutors, the, the you name it, senators, representatives, and some because they can't get their voice heard, they're gonna set a terroristic threat. Who's doing greater terroristic threat? Who's doing what, what the face look look, look like? Because it's sure darn it, ain't no black face doing that. But yet black people being labeled as that it's kind of funny 
It shows the hypocrisy in this country and say that we don't see right. The hell that we don't. Who are the people that go around go around harassing people because someone's sexual orientation? Who what other people go around doing like what they did in Charlottesville, go around marching the street when pe people have in their session in the synagogue, let's such as Jewish. Who what, what did the individuals look like? What was it someone that looked like in fact? Not no. Was it like the Black Panthers? No. Was it the nation of Islam? No. See, this is what America don't want to tell, tell the truth. What, 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 what the kind of victim? Who goes and shoes up in suburban in schools? Does the black militia does that? Does he, they, does he encourage that? Does the inner city kid, does the inner city kid come up and shoot up in suburban school? No. What happened out in, 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 in uh, Aurora, Colorado? Come on. Tell me. But yet, black people get labeled as a terrorist. And terror, the, the most scum on the earth. But we're not doing doing stuff like that. And kids, I mean, if there's if it's inner city problems in the kids, there's something that's in the inner city. And it's, and it's just as foul and it's ugly. But the people out there in the suburbs, most time, most suburbs don't have to worry about that. That's a fact. But it's somebody who's coked up, drugged up, on crank or meth out there, and they get they can't handle life, and so they you know they get get the hooked on some video games, and next thing you know they're shooting up the damn some some suburban school in some little town, like it what happened in Connecticut, and out and, and this is what's about. And this is what put, puts, and this is what kind of drums up the gun laws and everything, because there's a civil war of people among white people. It comes back to white people. It really does. You got ones that want to keep the guns and want to keep up the old ways, and then you got ones that that don't. That's the same way with the politics. It comes back to white America. Everything that they do. They have to take accountable. They take accountable for what the injustice. They take accountable for the gen gentrification. Take accountable for how to handle people in poverty. They create the situation. Then, it, then they say, "Well, these people live there outside by a bootstrap. Throw them out there in the streets. Take them off of welfare. They want, they, then, then put them in jail. Put them in prison. Now that the same people that want to put some of these poor people and some mostly black." And it's certain percentage of white in prison. Now they got they they got to pay what they tax us. Now they mad about that. You started it, 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 the doggone thing. This is what you do. Either you gentrify them, kick them off as assistance. Fine, they pay. And they, what, what the hell are they supposed to what supposed to do? Well, get up and get a job. What the hell? Okay, okay, no, okay. Who gonna hire them? Cause they ain't got no place to stay. Cause they get, can't get, get evicted. See, everybody got 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 these so-called concerted problems, but nobody wants to complete the doggone doggone solution. Nobody, and, and there's a certain part of America that well, I, I don't, oh, well, I don't. I, that's you, you, you people out there. There's people out in no, your well-reduced areas cause this problem. You go and buy up all the doggone property. I was talking with someone earlier about this, and it's the same thing happened down low. That's what sparked this stuff, arced all this stuff, because they're trying to get rid of it, and it was alleged to be alleged from different YouTube who brought the information to the vi to the video that they was gentrifying it from Breonna Taylor's mo mother to get rid of those people down there. This is this is what sparked this all, all this thing. This is why I had to go to the next level and expose all these individuals. And the mayor is, is, is going to be put in the hot seat because of it. The chief, you see what happened with the chief of police and all those representatives. Because they're going to, they're going to, whoever associate, they pull them back because now the up, upper government had to get involved because because this black militia group and all this protesting with Black Lives Matter and all this stuff with putting down, making sure it, that the city don't completely burn down with the National Guard and the police. All this is, is, 
that's how it all ties together. And you and some of these dumbass people don't seem to understand this. This is what these folks are thinking. And then when they do that, that's how they they criminalize them. Then they then they load them up and put them in, up in the jails and the prison. So coping that they keep going, and they keep the system going and going and going because it's a money maker. It's a capital. Well, then they could build more jails and prisons, probably down down in little outside Louisville, Kentucky, to, 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 to put the rest of you, rest of the inner city poor. That's what they do. And then these same white people get pissed because now they have to that their funds they got to go and pay for the jails and prison. Well, you provide the jobs. Now you got to pay for it for everyone. So many prisoners that's in, in jail, and people that's in jail. So you get you get screwed. Fuck, screwed all the way around. You see, you see how racism costs sixteen trillion dollars because you don't like to play fair. That's the reason why. That's the reason why the conditions that some sees the way that the end is is in in the city. And you got some, you know, cops that act like basically like soldiers, race soldiers, as they say. Cause, cause them, and cause keep causing city that that same money could be going to, to different services. Now it has to come out of out of ready day fund because your ignorance and your racism has caused that. That's what it comes down to. That's why it, it happened. It, it sparked all this throughout the city and throughout America. It's because of stuff like this. And so that's where you have all these different segment of groups rising up. And it's going to cost you 16 trillion more when you, racism. And you keep putting people to death on your police forces and you don't control those individuals or whatever. It's going to cost them necessity more money. And it's going to affect some area of their budget. This is going to keep happening. If they don't get their cops under control. And get get rid and, and deal with that at them FOPs, because this ain't gonna FOPs gonna cost them some money, for real, or it's either gonna either, if, if they, they get they it'll get away with it, then you have what they had this summer. People don't they they fed up, and it be miles of people tearing up the doggone city, burning down the doggone town, and then someone had to end, end, end up putting putting bodies in the streets. And now you gonna look like you like a third, second, third world country. This is the, this is what's going on. This is the reality. But everybody wants so called it, it, just, just get get them out my way. But the but this is what they don't understand when they gentrify, the poor is coming your way. Because where else they gonna put most of these poor people that you don't bought out of they bought them out of their home and bought their neighborhoods down. And then you put in these new professional people jacked up with the rent about a, a couple grand. Where else they gonna go? They they coming right out in some of the backyards and the neighborhoods out there. They gonna have to make a way because because and then it's like if you don't, they'll just be cluttered around your business. This is what's happening in the, through all these cities. You've seen a rise of homeless. The homeless is probably getting so bad that most. Of, most of the shelters can't even fill them up. But nobody wants to solve a problem. Get them out, get them away from my business, get them away from this. But you didn't want to start, but, but there was a group of individuals like you that went down there and bought all, and, and, kicked, and kicked all those people out. The low income until the no income. And now, and like we, I was talking with my, uh, uh, this person early, now COVID-19 kicked in. Now it's affecting the business. See, what come around, dirt comes around. And these elitist people who, who, who did this, this, this single-handedly dirt is suffering some kind of effect. And it took something like this incident with COVID-19. Now it's affected everybody from all walks of life. Now hardly no one can make no money. Thanks to the 2% of 1% of billionaires that, that, that did what they did. Because they're they so wicked and they so evil. They want to control stuff. And yeah. And, and then you got a certain percentage of people thinking that they're part of them. No, you're not a part of them. 
the ones that, who caused this economy to crash. Whoever they are, they know who they are. But that's the reality, folks. But that's sorry to make this video so long, but that's the reality of what's going on. And it was it was to do that purpose to trip things up. And it got a trip up. So hang on and I hope you enjoy this this view. Till next time, you guys be blessed.